Humidity. It might be the most misunderstood and overcomplicated topic in the tarantula hobby. Every week, I get messages from new keepers asking, what humidity should my tarantula be at? 68%, 72%, the care guide says 78%, but my gauge says 65%. Is my spider going to die? First off, relax. Your tarantula isn't checking the hygrometer in the middle of the night to see if you're doing your job. And second, those exact numbers you see in care guides, a lot of them are arbitrary. They get repeated so often that people start treating them like gospel, when in reality, it's not how they live in the wild, and it's not something we should be stressing this much about when keeping tarantulas in captivity. So today we're breaking down the myth of humidity levels, the problem with hygrometers, why beginners obsess over it, and a better way to think about humidity. Just a simple three-tier system that makes a lot more sense. Here's the truth. The exact humidity percentage listed in most of the care guides you find online is not based on a tarantula's needs. It's usually just pulled from some general weather data of the country they're from. Like if it rains a lot in Brazil, someone will write, 80% humidity for Brazilian species. Sounds scientific, right? Except your tarantula doesn't live in a giant open field on top of the weather station. They live in a burrow, under leaf litter, inside rotting logs. The humidity inside those microhabits is nothing like the weather reports. This is something that I've witnessed firsthand finding tarantulas all over North, Central, and South America. It may be 98 degrees for me as I'm walking around, but the temperature and humidity in their burrow or under a rock or high up in a tree is much cooler than the relative air temperature. And in arid environments, you find their burrows are more damp. And in damp environments, their burrows are a little more dry. And that's why obsessing over 2% or 5% differences in your enclosure is pointless. Tarantulas care about whether the substrate can hold a burrow, whether there's moisture when they need it, and whether they can drink water when they want. They don't care if your digital gauge says 62% or 65%. Now let's talk about hygrometers themselves. And then we're talking about those little digital or analog humidity gauges that you can stick inside your enclosure. They're mostly junk. The cheap ones are wildly inaccurate and really have no way of being calibrated. I've tested some that were off by 15 to 20%. And even if you buy a nice one, most of those can't even be calibrated. They're basically decorative or to give you a general idea of humidity levels. Worse, they only tell you the humidity of the air right next to them. You stick one on the glass wall in the middle of the enclosure and it tells you absolutely nothing about the humidity down in the burrow where the tarantula spends the majority of its time. That's like checking the weather app to decide if the basement is damp. It's not gonna give you any useful information. So why do so many new keepers stress about humidity? I think part of it is fear. Everyone's scared of killing their first tarantula, which is perfectly normal. And because humidity is invisible, it feels mysterious. You can't see really if it's too dry or too wet. So people want to cling to these numbers as if they're keeping their spider alive by hitting these targets on a gauge. The other reason definitely is the internet. If you spend more than 10 minutes in a Facebook group, you'll see someone scold a new keeper. Your humidity is too low. That's why your spider died. Never mind that the real reason was probably dehydration, a fall, genetics, or just bad luck. Humidity can very easily become the scapegoat for everything. Instead of obsessing over numbers, let's simplify this. I like to break it into three categories. This is how I do it here in the studio. First off, you got arid species. These are your desert or scrubland tarantulas. Think of Faunapelma calcodi, Gramostola poker peas, most of the chilicotl species. For these, keep the substrate mostly dry with a water dish available at all times. Maybe overflow the water dish once in a while to add a touch of moisture, but that's about it. You've got your temperate species. These come from environments that aren't bone dry, but they're not swamps either. Species like Brachypelma amelia or Nondutrapepi. For these, you want a good mix. Some areas of the substrate slightly damp and some areas dry. 
basically give them the option to choose where they're comfortable. They seem to really thrive when you give them a humidity gradient, just like a temperature gradient for reptiles, where one side is cooler and one side is warmer. It's the same thing, but for moisture. One side is more damp, one side is more arid. Then the spider can decide what it really needs. Personally, I like to keep the bottom of the substrate damp and the top of the substrate dry. Just dig out a small burrow in the back corner of the enclosure, pour some water down there, and saturate the bottom. Then over time, the moisture seeps its way up through the substrate, providing optimal humidity, while leaving the tarantula a nice dry surface to walk around. And if they need more moisture, they can always just burrow down. Finally, we have our tropical species. These are the rainforest tarantulas. Your Theraphosa, Pamphibetus, Avicularia, Carabina, as well as a lot of the Asian fossorials. For them, you want damp but not soggy substrate that holds both moisture and burrows well. You also want to make sure there's good ventilation so things don't turn into a swamp. It's important that you don't let the substrate get soggy. You just want it humid enough that they can burrow and molt successfully without drying out. The substrate should feel damp in your hands, but you shouldn't be able to squeeze it and water come out when you make a fist. That's it. Three simple categories, just arid, temperate, and tropical. That's the system I use here in the Tarantula Collective as far as humidity and tarantulas go. And it's much easier to follow and seems to be much more successful than 73% humidity at night and 76% humidity during the day. At the end of the day, tarantulas don't care about numbers. They care about balance. What really matters is a substrate. Does it hold burrows? The water dish, is it full of clean water? The ventilation, does fresh air move through the enclosure? The gradient, can the tarantula choose between damper and drier spots? If you nail those basics, you're fine. Don't let that $3 junk hygrometer control your life any longer. So next time you see a care sheet that says, keep humidity at 78%, laugh a little bit and just move on. Tarantula keeping doesn't need to be a math exam. Think in terms of environments, not numbers, arid, temperate, tropical. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Do you still use hygrometers in your enclosure or have you tossed them in the trash like I have? Please leave a comment down below. Let's talk about it. Give me your opinions, especially if you disagree. As always, I appreciate you watching. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks for buying Tarantula Collective merchandise and I will see you next Tuesday. <laughs>